Okay guys, today I am in Millbrook, Alabama, and right between these two spooky trees right here lies the abandoned town of Spectre, the actual movie set from Tim Burton's movie Big Fish from I think it was 2003 or 2004. This is absolutely amazing, guys. In fact, to start, those trees I just walked by, they're not even real. These trees right here are actually part of the original movie set designed by Tim Burton and sculpted for the movie. If you look close, you can see where parts of them are kind of detached. There's actually like a thick wire inside to keep the branches all on there. Look how spooky this is. This is actual Spanish moss hanging from all these branches. But yeah, the trees themselves and the branches they're just, they're totally fake. They're made of foam and fiberglass. It kind of looks like paper mache in places, maybe some PVC pipe. Look at this. Yeah, you can even see the fibers from the fiberglass where it's glued on there. Of course, when you step back, you have no idea those are not real trees. This is Hollywood magic right in front of our eyes, guys, and I am absolutely blown away by this stuff right here. Look at the branches up here. Look how it looks like, like steel pipe or PVC or something coming out of there. That's what would have held those smaller branches together. Over here, it's very evident because this is just cut straight down. After all these years, you can really see all the fibers and the fiberglass. And, and look at this, just the foam in there. It's even soft. That's not even like concrete or anything in there. Look at this. This even looks like great stuff up here. If you've ever made um, Halloween props or anything, you know what great stuff is. Even if you fixed your house, you know what great stuff is. It's like this foam that you spray on and it just puffs up and gets hard. That's what that is right there, look at that. And look at the branch, how it just wobbles. I mean, it's hanging on there good because it has a wire inside, but man, this is just a real testament to how well this stuff actually is made. You can really see the foam on the path here. This is the way where Edward Bloom would have walked straight through here into the town of Spectre. But before we even get any farther than that, let's look back through here again, because this is what used to be the Dark Forest. If you watch Tim Burton movies, you know that this is so his style. And look at this. He hides things in here, like little scary faces. That almost looks like a pumpkin right there. And I know there's somewhere in the roots here where it looks like a skull. I have to locate it though. Where the heck is that? Oh, this right here. Yeah, look at this. This looks like a skull, like the eye sockets and the nose right there. How spooky is that? It's just so amazing. Up close, it's just foam and fiberglass, but from far away, it is spooky trees that have been growing here for thousands of years. We'll back up through the spooky trees for a minute here, and if you remember when Edward Bloom came through the dark forest and there was like the jumping spiders and everything else, this was the dark forest right here. Now they've cleaned it up a lot, obviously, but there used to be a billion other prop trees and scary spooky Tim Burton stuff back here. Now I honestly don't know how thick this area used to be with trees and that. I don't know how much stuff they had to bring in on their own, but if you look, there's natural Spanish moss on all these trees already. So this is the perfect environment to create the dark forest. I would have absolutely loved to be able to see all that stuff, guys. That would have been so cool to make it out here. But with that in mind, I have to give a shout out to everybody on YouTube who has filmed this place because you can go back over the years, about 10 years, and see the difference in this place over those 10 years. So many people have filmed this place. Adam the Woo, Jacob the Carpetbagger, Exploring with Josh. But I have to give a shout out to the Grim Life Collective because in his video recently I was watching and I noticed over here, these RVs. I honestly don't recall if they were in other people's videos, but I noticed them in his. And I probably noticed them because now I'm living in my RV and traveling full time. So when I was thinking about coming out here, I was thinking, well, where would I park? And I saw those in the background and I'm just like, holy crap, I can camp at Spectre. <laughs> it turns out this is actually an island where you can come and camp. The Boy Scouts come here, people bring their RVs. There are actually campsites around the whole island. It is absolutely beautiful here. I have another video I'm putting up about this on one of my other channels. It's called Romancing the States, where I took a tour around the entire place and show you guys everything here. It is just absolutely amazing. You have to see it. But back to what we are here for today. This is the angle you see when Edward Bloom comes walking out of the dark forest 
into the town of Spectre. As far as I understand, this is the original Welcome to Spectre sign from the movie. And the camera pans up to these shoes hanging on a clothesline. Though these are obviously not the original shoes. The original clothesline was down in other videos. I have no idea what happened to the original shoes. But these are just shoes that people who have come to visit here have tossed up on this line. I thought this was cool right here. These people actually wrote their name on the bottom of their shoes. <laughs> I actually have a pair of shoes I brought with me to toss up there, and I was going to do that exact same thing, but since somebody else did it, I'm not going to. And I don't see names on the bottom of any other shoes as I walk under here. I do see a pair up here that has something written on them. Let's see if we can see what it is. I'm gonna have to go back in the video myself and look because I can't hold the camera still and try to read it at the same time. But that is pretty cool, guys. Look, there's everything from bowling shoes to spikes, Nikes, Adidas, baby shoes up there, everything. <laughs> and on the end here, there's even a pair of shoes like you would have seen in the movie, sort of. Holy crap, those are like red sequin shoes, too. <laughs> oh my god! I know it's difficult to really see the details in those shoes or anything out here today, guys, because it's so overcast, it's been raining, it's dark and gloomy, but it makes a perfect day for exploring something like this. Look at that. How incredible is this? You can see where I had to put my camera equipment on that porch over there earlier because it started pouring rain. But we are really going to take a little bit of time here, guys, and uh, just spend some time looking at the details of this set because this is a Hollywood movie set. It is really amazing. This kind of stuff totally blows my mind. Now, in the movie, originally, there were a lot more buildings. It was like a whole town out here with businesses and everything. The road was not paved. This was all super green grass. Typical Tim Burton stuff. But at one point, there was a fire on this island, and it burned down most of those businesses. In fact, all of them. All that's left are just like the houses that you see right now. So let's start with this one right here that just looks like a log cabin. You can see this one in the background in one shot where Edward Bloom walks through the town. I mean, I don't know why I'm even saying that, because you can see all this stuff. <laughs> this is the porch where the banjo guy was playing, and the guy who played the banjo, he was sitting there playing dueling banjos. He's the guy who actually was the kid in Deliverance playing dueling banjos when the guys showed up. I love when people put that kind of stuff in movies. That is so cool. But let's look at this one first before we do anything else. This looks like a typical log cabin with a fireplace inside. I was told that the roof was actually replaced on this one, but the rest of the structure is original. Now look at this, guys. Look at how these are made from slats of wood rather than actual logs, and they're starting to, uh, to separate there. And there's even this stuff on here that makes it look like it was one big piece of wood, like how it is on the end here. This stuff is all peeling off. This would be the fireplace over here, and this is hard. I mean, that looks like real stone there. I think it's just plaster, but look how it's all falling apart here. And you can just see it's particle board up there on the top. You can really see on the back here where this is made to look like it's logs on the end, but as we come around more, you can see it's just thin pieces of wood, like slats of wood, made to look like they're big logs on a cabin. And these right here, this is how thick it is right here. It's all cut off there. These are all glued together. That's not a log going through there. That's all Hollywood movie magic. Around the back here is really interesting. When they built these, they didn't even put a back. It was just wide open because you were never going to see the back of the buildings. So the wood slats that make this look like a log cabin never even carried through to the back. That was just wide open in there. These are legit glass windows. And with that in mind, that is one thing that I absolutely love about this location, where they decided to build this, because it's on this island. It's a private-owned island, and you can easily get access to it. You pay a couple bucks and come in and spend the day here. Like I said, people are over here camping. But it's not just left out in a field randomly somewhere where people can come in and graffiti and totally destroy it and break all the windows. There are a couple broken windows here, but nothing like what you would see if this was just left out in the open. This stuff would not even exist anymore. In fact, 
fact, if you go back to some of those older videos, they go back as far as 10 years, and you can see where all this stuff, everything was overgrown here. I mean, the houses were just getting swallowed up by vegetation and trees. It was absolutely crazy. So these guys that own the island, they have come out here and cleaned all this stuff up and really done a great job to preserve this movie set. So I wanna show you the inside of this building as well. Look at how the porch, is all coming apart here. You know, I don't know if it would be a shame for them to try to fix that up and make it look more like it did in the movie, or if it's just better to leave it like this because it is Hollywood history. I love it. I don't think they should touch it, but you never know. I mean, over time, well, we won't even be able to step up here because this will be so warped, just be falling through. So we can look in the window here real quick, and you can see where it's just a shell of a building and there's a little platform. Let's go look in the door. Now, right now they have these fences up on all the doors, so you can't actually go in, but you can walk up and look in. Okay, that door's not going anywhere else. But yeah, you can see where there's this platform here, and then there's just nothing else. It's just, you know, the shell of a building because that's what it was built to be. Nobody was ever gonna see in there. There's not even a fireplace over there. Remember how there was the bricks outside as if there was a fireplace in here? There's no fireplace. But the reason for the platforms inside all these buildings right inside the door is so that the actors and all the staff could just go in and out freely because while you're focusing on the man who's standing here talking, there's people in the background going in and out of these houses. So they have the door locked up on this building over here. It's not actually locked. They just have it tied closed. You could probably untie it and go in, but I'm not going to do that because obviously they don't want you to do that. There are other videos online, though, uh, before they put up the fencing and close the doors where people did get to go inside these buildings. But again, inside each of these buildings is nothing more than just a shell. We can look in here and you can see just all kinds of you know, junk and equipment, there's a ladder in there, but it's just the shell of a house because nothing was filmed inside these rooms. Crap, my light just died on me. <laughs> I hope it's not too dark in any of these. So once again, looking closer at some of this stuff, you can see how this was just built for the movie. I mean, this stuff that was made, it wasn't made to last any longer than just as long as the shoot took. Here we have one window that there's no window in. I could lift this up here and see if you can see anything. Yeah, see, it's just the shell of a building in there, just, you know, construction materials and things like that. And again, coming around the back, you'll notice that the side of the building looks one way, and the back is just nothing but particle board, because we were never meant to see the back. It's the same with almost every one of these. There's a couple of them up here that actually have a porch on the back, and I'll show you that in a minute. Of course, somebody had to be stupid and put some graffiti on the back of this one. But if you'll notice on this one, how the paint is all peeling off and everything. That is actually not from it sitting here abandoned for so many years. Of course, some of this is, you know, the stuff's been sitting here not getting used. It's just falling apart on its own. But if you remember, when Edward first shows up in Spectre, everything is absolutely beautiful. Then he comes back later on and the elements have got to it and the outside world has got to it and it begins to look like this. Now again, yes, this would happen over years of just being abandoned, but they actually have a process where they put chemicals on the buildings, they wrap them up in plastic, and then when they remove the plastic just a couple days later, this is what it looks like. So it goes from looking brand new and beautiful to old and dilapidated in a matter of days. I absolutely love the way this one looks, and I would have to guess that the roof on this one was probably replaced as well, but there's no windows in the front. Look at how bad the front porch is here. Let's look in these windows. Yep. It's just a shell of a building here. It looks like a little heater over there, so I would kind of wonder if maybe the staff actually used to go in this building here and use this as an area to warm up or whatever, you know, rehearse lines or something. I don't know, because going back as far as I can remember in the videos I've watched, that heater is there. Oh, look at this. There's some curtains hanging here still. I don't know if these were what were up in the movie, but it's kind of interesting to see. I'm not sure why they have that door over there or where it really leads because I'm not aware that there were any scenes actually filmed inside this building. The mayor's house is actually down here, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and there was a scene filmed in there, but any of these other ones, I, I don't recall. I don't remember that at all. Let's go check this one out on the other side of the street here. If you happen to come here, be really careful on that porch because it's really wobbly and bouncy. 
I love the way this one looks with the tree in front of it here. This is really cool. The porch looks like it held up really well on this one. But again, here you go with just the uh, the platform inside. I don't know why this one extends back there. Maybe there was a scene where there were a lot of people coming out of here. So they had to make room for a lot of actors in there. Slats are missing here and over here as well. There used to be lights on the front of all these. And that, that's interesting that the lights were there because, like I said, you know, in the beginning of the movie, this place was absolutely beautiful. It was all lit up. If you guys remember, through the whole town, there were lights strewn back and forth and crisscrossed around here. Everything was lit up. Everybody was dancing out here. There was no road. It was all just plush green grass. What do you guys think? If somebody decided they wanted to redo this and make it look like it did in the movie the first time when it was absolutely beautiful, do you think that's something they should do? Or should they leave it just like this, Hollywood history, as it sits today? And this really was originally all green grass. This road did not exist until they dilapidated the town. And then they just went in and paved this road in here as part of that remodel for the second part of the movie. I absolutely love the look of this house right here. It is missing a couple of the windows. I love that little star design up there and the shape of that archway. And then look at the porch over here. This is just so cool. Now you'll notice these bricks down here. They're supposed to look like real brick, but it's just paneling. There's more around this side and you can see where it's just kind of warped coming down here. And yeah, you can see the paint's all coming off. It's just paneling. Hollywood movie magic. On the porch here, we have the shingling all around where it might be seen on camera. But once we turn around, we're back to the plywood because nobody's gonna be in here seeing anything. They didn't film anything on this porch. Again, through the door here, we've got a platform. This is a pretty big one actually, goes all the way down there for all the actors to stand on. And when they said action, they all filed out of the house right out into the street. I gotta look at these French doors over here. Look at this, this is awesome. We are missing a couple of the windows in this one, but I love these doors here. I don't know if these are, no, they got those closed so you can't go in. You know, the owners of this property could have just let this stuff all fall down, get bulldozed, but they were nice enough and awesome enough to keep this stuff up so that we can all come out here and enjoy this. Just a piece of history. You can watch the movie like, I watched the movie last night just to kind of refresh. And then it's awesome to come over here and look at this stuff and you can go, oh my God, this is where that was filmed. But people come out here and do this crap and they just ruin it. Even over here, somebody wrote this with a black Sharpie, which is a quote from the movie. But come on, that's still graffiti. That's still destroying something that's not yours. If you come out here, appreciate it for what it is and leave it alone. Leave your hands off stuff. Don't destroy, don't graffiti. Let's get back to the show. I wanna come around and take a look at the back of this house. Yeah, they have the siding on this corner here and then nothing back here. This is just a particle board like the rest of it there. And this might give something away about a filming location here that maybe I'm not aware of yet because this is the back of the mayor's house right here. It is complete, so that and this corner here being completed tells me that something must have been filmed right out here in this area because this was gonna be the background on film. It makes me wonder, because there is a location I'm looking for and it's the location where uh, Edward Bloom's son takes him down to the water to die at the end of the movie. And I'm not sure where that was shot. Oh, it wouldn't have been here though because there were no houses or anything in the background. But you can see what I mean. If something was shot from over here, you can see the back of this building and then part of the back of this one and that would have been on film totally masking the part that's not finished so basically they could have filmed anything down this line here and still only caught on camera everything that was finished on these houses that is very interesting to me okay so let's move on to this one and then we have just a couple more to go I love the look of this house with the two windows up there. There's a little break in that window over there, but let's go look inside. So this one's just like the others with the platform right inside here. This one is longer and hmm, it comes all the way over there. I wonder if they had somebody looking out a window um, at some point in the movie. You never know. I'm gonna have to go watch it again just to see because now I'm curious. Some of these platforms are bigger than others and I can only assume that they had more actors and extras in these specific houses so that they could all come out at one time. 
And I mean, they had to have somewhere for the extras and the other actors to hang out when they were not doing scene. So that only makes sense. I'm just curious. I want to step back and see the side of this one and go around the back. And there we are again with the particle board on both of these houses. Remember, these were wide open when they first built them back was never even meant to be seen at all. I love how the windows are all still pretty much intact in all these. Now these are missing a few. These, these windows actually fell out over time, I'm sure. Platform, there's the front door. Yep. I wish I could find footage online of them building this stuff originally. That would be really, really awesome to see. I love the porch on this one. Look at the archways there. That is so cool. I'll bet you this roof was replaced also. And this here is the mayor's house. This is the only one that I'm aware of they actually filmed inside. I showed you a minute ago how this one has the front porch and the back porch. This is probably the most complete house on the whole lot. Shutters on the windows, siding all around the porch. On the inside and the out, this is built in a way where it didn't matter what got on film. And inside this house, okay, looks like I might have to go around the back to show you this, but there's the fireplace right there. Now this is the uh, house where they shot the scene that the poet and the mayor and uh, Edward were all sitting around a table. They were eating pie and the poet and the mayor didn't have shoes on, but Edward did. And the little, Je the little girl, Jenny, uh, came in the house, crawled under the table, took his shoes off and ran out the door down this street all the way down and threw his shoes up on the clothesline down there with the rest of the shoes. Now the camera angle from that one would have been from way down the street there, but you see the girl run out of there and straight down the street here with Edward chasing her until they arrive all the way at the end and she throws his shoes up there on the line. Let's go around the back here and uh, see if I can get a better shot inside and show you that fireplace where that scene took place. Yeah, here's the back of this house again. Unlike the other house that had the fireplace, this one actually worked. Yeah, we got an open window here. So there's the fireplace. And that one did actually have a fire burning in it in the scene where they're sitting around the table. This would have been more of the angle from this end of the room filming down there. You can see where the top of the room is not finished because that wouldn't have made it onto uh, on the film. But they were sitting around the table. The mayor had his back to the fireplace right there. The poet was on the left side and Edward was sitting over here. And the girl took his shoes and ran right out the door. I'm telling you guys, it is just unreal to be here right now on this movie set. I love this kind of stuff. I wanna do a lot more uh, movie filming locations. It just depends. And I'm traveling to states now, so it's a possibility. All right, guys, so we have one more building to explore here, and that is the church at the end of the street. Now, I'm not aware that anything was filmed inside this church. Um, I believe they filmed in another church in Alabama, but as we look at this building, you can't ignore the two goats on the front. <laughs> now, first of all, let me say, I am absolutely amazed that I made it through this entire exploration with no goats in the picture. But as I turn around to the church, you can see two of them on the front porch, and if you look close, you can see more of them under the church. Guys, there's about 60 goats here that live in that church. They're probably all in there right now because they're hiding from the rain while I'm out here getting soaked. But there is the church. It looks pretty awesome. It's completely done on both sides and the front. So filming from anywhere out here, they could have filmed towards the church and not worried about anything getting in the scene that was not finished. Here's the other side here. You see there's some of the lattice falling out over here. And then on the side here, again, we have these bricks that on film they would look real but in reality it's nothing but paneling now we'll come around the back here and yeah once again here you have the back of the church which is not finished so they wouldn't have filmed anything from this angle back here but like i was saying earlier they could film up this way and the mayor's house has the back porch it's finished in the back part of the other house beside it so you see part of that siding on that one and then over here you could still see part of the siding on the church without getting the back in the picture and i believe some actual time was put into this church um, to to build it stronger after uh, production wrapped 
because what I understand was that this was put up and the sides were only held up with wire. Like there was just wire strung between the walls holding them up. Because you gotta remember, in a movie where no scenes take place in a building, the building is nothing but a backdrop. Especially like those old spaghetti westerns. Those aren't real buildings. All that is is just a facade there. And, uh, and it looks like buildings, but it's nothing. It's just a big piece of wood. The rain is starting to come down again here. I am getting soaked. I'm gonna wrap this up, but let me show you these goats one more time because they are just too funny. Those look like two billy goats up there, or at least the one with the beard is. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then they're all under that church. Like I said, there's like 60 of them. I'm not gonna go up here and scare these goats away. They're staying dry right now. But I looked through those windows earlier and the church is just empty, but there's a big platform in there covered with hay where they probably go just to stay warm. So I just think that's hilarious. However, that means this entire place is also covered with goat poop. Well worth it for an awesome filming location like this. Even though it's been pouring rain, this has been an awesome day. It made it spooky to be out here. If you want to see more about the goats, I'm actually going to put up a whole video of nothing but those goats because it's just amazing that they have taken over this whole place. That will be on one of my other channels though, so make sure you subscribe. Romancing the States, that Nate guy too, that Nate guy on YouTube, and my wife's channel is Life Unboxed if you want to go check that one out too.